Uh, so like I said, today we're going to talk about bioenergetics. Um, really just a brief overview, because um, just keep in mind that these videos are supposed to be supplementing the 15 week course that we had previously done. Um, so if you need clarification, you can definitely email me. I'll put my email at the end of the slide, um, but you can also go back to our page um, and just try to look through the 15 week, the original 15 week program, um, because there are a lot more videos on these topics there and um, they could go a little bit more in depth. So these videos are really just aiming on filling in the gaps between uh, the AMC content and what we had already taught. Um, so with that being said, let's just dive right in. So introduction to bioenergetics and ATP. Uh, so bio, bioenergetics refers to the flow of energy through living systems. Um, so the most commonly discussed on the MCAT are the anabolic and catabolic pathways of metabolism. So basically, you know, everything that we've learned before glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, uh, beta oxidation, fatty acid synthesis, etc. Um, bioenergetics can also refer to growth and development um, because obviously energy is important for growth and development as well. <clears throat> and one of the most important molecules in bioenergetics is ATP. So this molecule down here is ATP. We're going to go over it, um, I think, in two slides, um, but you could see right over here, we have this base over here, um, this five carbon sugar, and then we see three uh, phosphate groups that are attached to each other. Um, so we'll talk in a little bit about why ATP is important and how its structure um, allows it to carry energy throughout the cells. Um, so energy sources, obviously all living organisms get different, get energy from different sources. Um, so plants, uh, we should start with, it would make the most sense. They're considered autotrophs, uh, but specifically they're considered photo autotrophs, which means they use sunlight to produce their own energy. Because remember photo meaning light, auto meaning oneself. Um, so just keep that in mind that they use sunlight to produce their own energy. And this is how most of the energy actually comes into the ecosystem. Um, plants are, you know, they use energy from the sunlight, um, just like this diagram to the right. Um, and then it's consumed by one animal that's consumed by another animal that's consumed by another animal. So that's how, um, these other animals, which are known as heterotrophs, which humans are, um, that's how they get their energy. So humans are specifically chemo heterotrophs, which means we utilize chemical energy by consuming other living things. So basically we just eat living things. Um, we need to get our energy source from an organism because we cannot produce our own energy. Plants obviously, you know, undergo photosynthesis to create their own energy, um, but we can't do that because we are chemo heterotrophs. So we have to get our energy from elsewhere. Um, but plants and animals, once they do have their energy source, um, cellular respiration is the same thing. Um, plants and animals um, oxidize these organic molecules, these nutrients that they take in or that they create, um, and they give off CO2 and ATP. So ATP also stands for, um, is also known as adenosine triphosphate, and it's a high energy molecule that's often referred to as the energy currency of the cell. So most of the um, the main goal of cellular respiration is to replenish ATP in the cell. Um, there are a couple of other molecules, you know, higher energy electron carriers. There are other molecules involved in cellular respiration that are high energy and that can transfer energy. But ATP is pretty much the end goal because it's the most easily accessible um, and it's it's the preferred energy for for most cells. Um, so ATP is used in transport of materials. It can be used in mechanical work. Um, and it can be coupled with unfavorable reactions to drive them forward. So there are three major structural components of ATP, which is this nitrogenous base, if you look over to the left. So um, you can actually substitute or your body can actually substitute this nitrogenous base to make different, um, make different triphosphates. So for example, another common one, not as common as ATP, but another common one is GTP, which um, is used with G protein coupled receptors, for example. So different, um, different nitrogenous bases attached to these triphosphates will have different functions inside the body. Um, so the energy, most of the energy in ATP is carried um, actually on the triphosphate chain. Um, they're connected with bonds called phosphoanhydride bonds, and they are not the most stable. They're very high energy bonds. Um, so hydrolysis of the outer phosphate usually is the most common mechanism of energy transfer. Um, so when we hydrolyze, when we add water to that, we break that phosphoanhydride bond and that third phosphate group pops off, that's where the energy release is coming from. So normally that phosphate will attach to something else, uh, you know, some sort of protein or an enzyme, um, and it's gonna take the energy with it. And that's how we get this coupling of reactions. So if a reaction was unfavorable at one point, 
we take ATP, it's such a strong driving force that it actually has enough energy to drive an unfavorable reaction. So that's why ATP is super important. Um, and like I said before, it's used in the transport of materials. So like in the cell, um, and it's also used for mechanical work. So ATP is important with uh, those actin myosin complexes uh, with striated muscles, uh, for example. So when ATP is hydrolyzed, it turns into um, ADP. So ATP is adenosine triphosphate and ADP is adenosine diphosphate. Um, we're just taking one phosphate group out and ATP is more stable and it's much lower energy than ATP. So it's not really usable. We can't really get a lot of energy out of it. Um, the outer phosphate group is transferred to another molecule, but the cell does use the ratio of ADP to ATP um, to drive these sort of cellular and these cellular reactions. So if ATP is too high and ATP is too low in the cell, um, it will start to produce ATP. It'll increase cellular respiration, will increase um, oxidative phosphorylation, and we'll try to generate some ATP with uh, that ATP synthase. Um, so the release of energy during the reaction, so ATP being hydrolyzed into ADP meaning, it can be used to drive forward unfavorable reactions that are vital to survival. So there are a lot of reactions that occur in your body that probably would not, that definitely would not happen without the help of ATP or without the help of enzymes. Um, so if you look at this diagram at the bottom, you can see uh, the coupled reaction. So we're adding H2O to ATP, um, that's gonna hydrolyze it and it's gonna create ADP plus this inorganic phosphate. So if we look directly over at this first row, um, we'll see that the delta G, which again is the energy, but we'll talk about that soon in a little bit, um, is negative 7.3 kilocalories per mole. Um, the reaction directly underneath it, um, we have glucose turning into glucose 6 phosphate uh, plus water. So that delta G is positive, which means it's non spontaneous. So that's not going to happen. Glucose is never going to just randomly pick up an inorganic phosphate because it's not a favorable reaction. However, if we have ATP near the glucose, we hydrolyze ATP, release that inorganic phosphate. ATP is so much higher energy and it gives off so much energy in that reaction that the net reaction, when we look right at the bottom overall, um, we're attaching that glucose 6 phosphate. I mean, we're attaching that phosphate to glucose to create glucose 6 phosphate and ADP. So these reactants, these reactants, I'm sorry, are a lot less stable than these products. So because we're combining these two reactions, um, we can actually add up their energies and we see that it is a spontaneous reaction. Um, again, because ADP and G6P combined have lower energy than ATP and glucose. So just because glucose, uh, glucose 6 phosphate has a higher energy than glucose, but ADP has a much lower energy than ATP. When we add them together and we take the net, the overall reaction is favorable and it is spontaneous. So that is one of the super important jobs of ATP in the cell.